Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Senior Waterman Elder, Bill Yedindumau Funny. <laughs> and first I'll ask Bill to uh, acknowledge the traditional owners of this place. Thanks very much. Uh, I'm from Northern Territory. Yedindumau is the Aboriginal name. Bill Arne is a white man named because I have a white father. But I acknowledge the traditional owner for this country, the Kana tribe. My niece is married to one of the Kana people. I don't know where that is, probably somewhere. But she came up and visited me. And I have a nephew of mine here who's got chased by the cyclone crazy from Darwin. He's around here too somewhere. I don't know where. Anyway, I acknowledge them. Thanks very much for Kana people to let us go through with this performance today. Thank you. And uh, my name is Ray Norris, and together Bill and I are going to ask the question tonight, who were the world's first astronomers? When I say that, you probably know that Aboriginal people have been in this country for 50,000 years plus. And, um, as we'll show you tonight, there's a lot of astronomy in Aboriginal cultures. <coughs> and so if people have been doing astronomy in this country for more than a few thousand years, it's certainly older than the pyramids, older than Stonehenge, and so that makes Aboriginal Australian people world first astronomers. But there's a lot of questions we have to ask before we can get to that point. But this evening, first of all, uh, Bill and I are going to start off by telling you a bit about our background how, you may have guessed that Bill and I are from rather different backgrounds, actually. <laughs> and, uh, and yet, somehow, we end up doing these things together. And so we're going to start off this evening by telling you a bit about uh, where we came from. So, uh, this young guy. I haven't changed, have I? <laughs> uh, he was a total geek. I, I'm to well, it's me, obviously. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm a total geek. Uh, I was told by my mother that uh, at the age of two I disassembled my high chair. Um, <laughs> but unfortunately I wasn't up to putting it back together again. And uh, instead of fluffy toys I had uh, a tin clockwork chicken which I loved and took to bed. And uh, when I went to a primary school, me and some of my mates there um, in suburban England, uh, I was into making gadgets. We wired up all our desks with the Morse code arrangement so we could always send Morse to each other during the lessons, which our teacher just loved, as you can imagine. You know. um, and then when I, was, when I got to the age of about 15, I built a radio telescope in my backyard, um, as, as one does, and um, with uh, a chicken wire for the dish and peach tins and a whole load of army surplus radar equipment for the electronics. And it worked. And I, one of my great memories of it, my teenagehood is listening to the astronauts on board Apollo 13. I could actually hear them talking with my own equipment, which was really good. Your background's a bit different, isn't it, Bill? No, uh, <laughs> this way when I was a kid, the little one, back in the country, in the Waterman land, the place Willaroo where I was born, in the bush, in the country. This is the type of thing where I was dressed up to be a cowboy, to be a stockman, in the country with all baggy clothes and hat and all this. So, from the day one, when we was a kid, we learned so much from the old people in the bush traditional way, we part of our, our bush coolies. At the same time, we were happy to ride a horse. This day, when we went out mustering bush out in the country, and uh, we got a load of air, the cattle come in, and we had to put them through the water to have a drink, and they dirty the billabong. When they did their billabong, and all these barramundi come up. And as uh, the boy went along and grabbed the barramundi and put it out in that side. Anyway, the, the lady was called uh, Jackie Wilmotson. Jackie, come on, well, he told me and my other friend we were born at the same time. He said, hang on to those pair of Mondays if I can take a photo of them. He took a photo of us back in the 1940, sometime in 40 or 1938, was something, I don't know. But anyway, he took a photo, and there we are. They're standing up with the bar of Monday, hanging out with all baggy clothes. <laughs> you know? And when we was over there, we become a bush. Bush, we learned everything on the bush stockman in a bush <laughs> university, schooling on riding the colt, riding, making, flooding, whip and uh, ropes and everything. At the same time, we learned it in the bush university with the Aboriginal history and the cultures and all that. And there we are. That was in Wellaroo in Waterman country, in the Northern Territory, outside of Catherine Town. And that's where we are. 
And what about these baggy clothes you're wearing? Why, why are you, they look a bit big for you. Well, uh, those days, because any other teller made wasn't around in this country, all that I heard about it, all people used to say, we have to order uh, clothing from R.M. William in uh, Prospect, uh, South Australia, by Percy Street. That's what, I don't even know where. Percy Street round here. <laughs> anyway, that's how we got all our R.M. William boots and everything else. And that's what I was wearing, these old baggy old clothes, and there's me. <laughs> Okay, so that's your country. Um, so our countries are worlds apart, of course, and that's where I grew up in England in a greedy and pleasant land. We had uh, farms around us, not far from London, uh, but it was all agricultural, wheat, wheat and sheep and so on. And my dad was uh, a businessman in London. Uh, he used to go down to work every day in his bowler hat and rolled up umbrella and so on. Um, but we, we, we still had some local tradition. There's... Um, we had this story, there's a village called Brookman's Park, and there's apparently this Lord Brookman many years ago who was killed when his house caught on fire, big mansion. And uh, so he's supposed to walk around the parish boundary uh, every midsummer's evening in his flaming nightdress. So one evening when I was about 14, a group of us, we made some excuses to our parents and managed to stay up till midnight on the suburb eve, waiting for flaming Lord Brookman to come past. And uh, I don't think I've ever been so scared in my life. And fortunately he didn't turn up. <laughs> I don't know what I would have done if he had turned up. And uh, then I went on to high school. Um, our very old high school, one of the oldest schools in Britain, over a thousand years old, straight out of Harry Potter. Teachers were straight out of Harry Potter as well. <laughs> Except we didn't have the magic. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it was exactly like that. So that's my, my <coughs> country. What about your country, Bill? Well, uh, again, that over there in the Bush University School, where we went out in the country, real dry land in that, those days. Anyway, where we learned, we lived on a bush shelter with a grass humpy and a, a pepper bark shelter. Where we learned so, so much that old people showed us all about the old bush styles, and we'd go gather up hunting and making tools, whatever, wood carving and everything, and singing songs. You just gotta learn, that's what they do. I'll sing you one song with they told it. Jalangi jalingi janga balanga balan kaira jalanga kaira jalanga jalingi jalingi janga bal kaira jalanga kaira jalanga jalingi jalingi janga balanga bal. And they gave out voice, and you got to sing out to the atmosphere. They said to go to the sky. That's all. Right. Hey. <laughs> So <coughs> you're great living in your humpy. Now, uh, well, uh, we change a bit now yeah. because the modern stuff come in, but I'm asking to make a mud brick out of a straw and a, and a red soil and put it together and make a mud brick wall. We have to use white man galvanized iron to put it over the roof. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm saying. Right. I'm still living in the bush in my country where I'm born. But I'm born and I'm grown up, but I work at many places, but I go back and that's my... I'm really... I grew up in the bush. My sister was taken away. But not me, I stayed in the bush, hiding it. Or my mother rubbed me, I was black as the rest, black as the ink and like the rest of them. When the welfare come around, they couldn't find me. But I learned so much, thank Christ, I still know and I'm loving it. And that's why I learned so much about the Aboriginal history and the culture from the Bush University. <laughs> so your sister was part of the stolen generation? Yeah, he went to Kroger Island back yeah. in the 1930 sometime. Yeah. You know, he was taken away. So did your mother, she actually covered you in charcoal? Yeah, yeah, I was black in the so ring. I was really black. Like the whiter ring. kids who were taken yeah, away. Yeah, well, yeah. I think it's much better. <laughs> you know, that was much better for us. Yeah, yeah. But we could become all well expert of everything. You know, the traditional way of dancing and singing and night yeah. watching, but you leave me singing and night watching cattle to put it sleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we both uh, went on to our respective universities. Um, I went to Cambridge where I had uh, some fantastic, well, fantastically inspiring teachers. Some had Nobel Prizes and things. As teachers, they probably weren't that great, actually, but they were very inspirational. But like many of us, I think, at, at uni, what you really learn isn't from the lecture halls, it's from your fellow students and the things you do. And that's, uh, you, you can date it, can't you, it's seven cents. How would you know that? <laughs> um, with our combi there, and uh, we drove off, and uh, went, uh, drove across Europe, and went to Turkey and Greece and things. And this uh, beautiful young girl eventually became my wife. 
Um, and I remember sleeping under the stars out in Turkey with these great black skies, like you get in Central Australia, and looking up at the stars, as we all do, I think, and you look up and you think, what, what do they mean? What's out there? Are there civilizations out there? How does it all start? I think everybody right around the world does that, and I think that's the thing that, feels, uh, that brings Bill and I together. But what about your uni, Bill? Now, with the Bush University of the school, what I learned, my father was a white man, old Bellani, but he was married with a uh, Aboriginal woman, not married, but kangaroo married, what I call, I suppose, and that's why I become a board. But the old George Amonti was my dad. He's the one that uh, really read me and to, took me. He's in the middle there with the white uh, uh, forehead band. And uh, they taught us and took us a ceremony, law and culture way, where we've been taught for discipline and understanding to know about all the, all the law and everything. And there, I'm a lawmaker today still, because mm. I'm an elder, I'm 79. Anyway, uh, they taught us all that sort of thing, and I was very happy. And me and others and all the others who used to, and they used to say that, we'll, we'll sing all right. All the song, and we're going to learn you about what's the name of all the star landscape and rock painting and all this. That's part of the creation song that I made for Songline Trail from the western side right through the desert and finish up another road to the another end of the salt water. That's what I that's named at all the sites, water, all the iron mounds and blood plain and the long grass and tree and every pigment and everything at the same time. That's what they showed us. We're decorating and you're told us. That's what they told us. That's in the book in the book. Okay, so we both went through our initiation ceremonies, and there's my initiation ceremony, um, deciding what to do with my life, and uh, my dad there, uh, he ran an insurance company, he had great plans for how I'd join the company, and I had other plans, which he wasn't very happy about, he had some enormous rows about that. <laughs> uh, I wanted to, I kept on looking at those stars, I wanted to know how these stars worked, what it meant, how far out they went things like that. So I ended up doing a, a PhD, trying to work out how stars are born. And about the same time, I started getting interested in how different people see the sky. Um, so I started looking at the history of astronomy in England. But uh, let's move on to what you were doing there, Bill. This is why that I learned to become a really stockman and all this, and I'd grown up to be making uh, I always learned to be able to become a satellite by trade with the leather off the cows and kangaroo skin and all these sort of types. I, I learned to really become a qualified saddler. Well, I am a qualified saddler. From the bush where I learned... Anything you don't do. Uh, you know, <laughs> that was our bush. We, had, we didn't know what trade we got. But we we yeah. become a stock and windmill expert, everything to become a well sinker, yard builder, fancy, everything, work breaking in, wild horses and rations and all these sort of things. That's why I've come along and we've mustered the cattle in the country. You know, we didn't have a pocket watch for all these sort of stuff. And we went along much in the distance. And I'm coming back in the dark, and it's the only way that we, some of you young fellas, they said, you've got to follow that star. That star, you leave it, might be on the left or right, you could go in the middle and go straight to your camp every night. Whether there was a big old man, where you go around like that, the star usually guide us into the camp. When you get up there, you can see the little fire campfire going in there and all that. And we got over there with the yard to cattle. Sometimes it's a broken down yard, you have to night watch the, night watch the camp. Too. And then the, the night with the, uh, the old broken down yard, you have to sing a cattle to go to sleep or outside of the yard, we have to night watch it. And then we have to sing a song. And, they, and this is a song for the, put the cow to sleep. What do you want, Gunya? What do you want, Gunya? Go for Nali, one for Nali, what do you want, Gunya? What do you want, Gunya? Go for Nali, one for Nali, what do you want, Gunya? What do you want? When you sing in that cow, the cow, you make the cow go to sleep, you can hear the grunting when he's down, laying down, he's going, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> What do you want, Gunya? What do you want, Gunya? Come on, Nelly, one by Nelly. What do you want, Gunya? What do you want, Gunya? For the sound of the people boys to make any wild cattle go to sleep at midnight in a roving day. And then the people used to sing right through till the uh, first star come up. When the first star come up, you could see the cook will wake up and light up campfire. 
when he lights the campfire, put the billy on, and he'll call the horse tail, he'll bring the horse in with the bell jingling on the way, and, uh, and everybody will have breakfast. And, they, and as soon as they finish the breakfast, and the bloke will be still singing, What do you want, Gunja? What do you want, Gunja? Go on, Ali, one banali, what do you want, Gunja? What do you want, Gunja? Go on, Ali, one banali, what do you want, Gunja? And at the time, then everyone come together, and then they come along, We have to move the cattle, and they crack the whip. And the cow will get up. <laughs> everyone is just singing. <laughs> <laughs> So the same time as you were, same time in our lives as you were waking up the cattle, I'd uh, started going round with some friends. That's uh, myself there and mate Clive Rogers, and we started with some other friends looking at uh, stone, stone Age and Bronze Age uh, monuments around Britain, things like Stonehenge, and uh, some of these seem to be astronomical. This is us uh, out there in the Western Isles of Scotland. We spent every summer for several years out there studying these uh, megaliths and finding out if they're astronomical. Turned out some of them were. And so, well, I, I gradually realized that the people who built these things 4,000 years ago in Britain, they were interested in things like where the sun rose and set, where the moon, how the moon moved. They were interested in the cardinal points. They are interested in how the sky worked. And we find this all around the world that indigenous people uh, are fascinated by the sky. We're all fascinated by the sky. Um, but it's especially good with indigenous people who haven't got all the stuff we get in the university, which sometimes obscures these essential truths they're after. And uh, people here knew there were, 4,000 years ago in Britain, were very interested in these special directions. And you have the same in your culture, don't you, Bill, with these yeah. paintings? Yeah, this is a painting that I that what I was taught from my traditional old people from this. All, all stepfather, mum, and all other grandparents, and all these sort of stuff. This is why they said you got to paint this to put all of your your country way where you're going to name it. See, they said they did a big air bell, and I can work. They call it uh, buttercup. Buttercup means they spin the air bell like this in a big bowl. You know, they said, I could do that too. But I was taught to make cloths and everything to keep a jumper and everything in the winter time. So, so it's, it, a, it's a belt which yeah, is made of... Yeah, what? big air belt. Air human belt hair with, the air, with, the, with the quail air and the human yep. air, yep. everything put together in the straw and everything. But right. they used to do it. We could make a blanket, but we made an air belt to it, all of it, you know. It was a great air belt. And uh, the air belt was put by the Prada Lisset. We call it Kanangari. And uh, either one, he stood in the middle, he said, right, he said, I'll throw it, he threw it north. And then he called it Yang. But he unwinded back and he threw it uh, Namanya, he threw it south, and he, uh, and he rolled it up. Then he threw it west, he said Jongan, then rolled it back and he threw it east, he got it Koro, and he stood in the middle. And then there's a two uh, blackhead possum and a, a, a water possum, they're representing, they're in a rainbow, and in a milk of waving, said called Korondolmi. Korondolmi, the rainbow, and, uh, and then uh, uh, emu, and everything all in one together. In the Songline Trail, where they put it from the western side, right across through this country, through the desert over there. And they sang, they sang, Love run your name, Dalamanda, love run love run your name, Dalamanda, love run your name, 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 love run well, uh, well, the Milky Way now, we call it the Bonin, the Milky Way, and the black-headed possum is there, right where the Milky Way. Right. And then, uh, go Okay. On. <laughs> so, you were learning that stuff, I was learning this stuff. This is the dish at Parks. Who's seen the movie, The Dish? <laughs> Almost everybody. That's amazing. <laughs> um, so, I'd come to Australia by now and uh, been attracted by all the fantastic astronomy that people are doing in Australia and big new telescopes being built. 
And uh, I remember seeing the Southern Cross for the first time in Australia. It was absolutely fantastic. You've, people have grown up in Australia. You don't realize how lucky you are in this fantastic sky. So in Britain, you can't see the Southern Cross. A, because it's raining all the time. <laughs> but B, even when it's not raining, it's, the Southern Cross is way down in the south. And you don't get the Milky Way as well. So here we have this fantastic Milky Way across the sky. And in Britain, it's just this sort of thing that's down on the horizon like that. And I got involved in finding out about stars and galaxies and searching for extraterrestrial intelligence and, and educating the next generation, which is something that both Bill and I do. And uh, so tell us about how you teach the next generation, Bill. Uh, from the next generation, that what I came across in the country, I started me on tour back in uh, 1987, when I was a little bit younger anyway. Uh, I started that Aboriginal culture tour, and I went along in the tour. Uh, the bloke, and I knew him pretty well, I later on, but he didn't know him, I didn't know him much, you can. You can come along in the one first tour, and he come along in the 1990. And he come along and he heard me talking about, I tell all the creation stories. So you stories. sitting down in the front here. Well, <laughs> you there sitting down in Hillary there, but you come along. Anyway, I tell a creation story all about the landscape and everything right up to the star. And I'm making a big connection to the star, and you come along and said to me, he said, look, I hear you talking about a lot of star much. He said, can you show me all them star? I said, yeah, all right. I show him the Milky Way, the Southern Cross, and the Scorpio, and everything that we can name it. Where I saw. And at first he said, uh, can we write a book about it? I said, yeah, we can do it. All right. And there he went on it, and had, we put books together, and there's a book over there, Star Sparkler. You're interested in it, he's there for you to read it. It's a great story to tell all about from me and you can. He's on, uh, I don't know what we call him, uh, you can, with a Scottish or a Pommy, but he's a Pommy and, and, <laughs> and a waterman, <laughs> me and I, we're sharing the culture. <laughs> How's that? Must be terrible to be surrounded by all these Yeah, the yeah, well, all right. <laughs> anyway, that's it. We put together the book, and then that's what we are. That's it called Nare. The Nare is the sky boss in the country. That's in the, uh, right in the Milky Way, uh, in, you know, the Nare, and the Dung Dung lady, because there's a frog lady, mother of all the lightning people, and all that, and I talk very strong with the creation story, and I'm teaching all my kids in the Bush University like I did. They go to white man's school, again, school up there, and, you know, and all them other places. They go to big university in down like Marara, all them places. But I say, I went to the Bush University, I get in the Bush proper, but I'm language. <laughs> and in one, I think the, the Scotsman taught me how to read and write from the charcoal in the flat rock. Spelled my Gilani and I learned self-taught in my own brain. <laughs> and that's what I learned. That's a not a boss, boss man in the sky today. All right, that's so we'll come back to him in a <laughs> short while. So um, this is uh, the job actually that I came over to Australia for was to help build this. This is the Australia Telescope in New South Wales. And my first job when I got to Australia was uh, to model where we should to work out, to calculate where we should uh, put these dishes. And um, as a research scientist, you know, I, most of what I do is writing papers. I uh, do research, and then I write up what happens in a paper, which gets written up in a journal. Sometimes you make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. If I make a mistake in my astrophysics, hopefully I'll find it first, or somebody else will find it. Uh, and then you write another paper, and you explain why you made this mistake. In this case, it doesn't really matter, is what I'm saying. <laughs> um, in this case, I remember coming up here, and there were all these bulldozers and trucks and people pouring concrete. And suddenly I realized, well, I really didn't check those calculations very well. <coughs> I hope I've got them right, because these trucks are now pouring concrete. And uh, if I've got it wrong, there's an awful lot of concrete to dig up. But uh, fortunately, it's all in the right place. Uh, and at about that time, I started to hear about this Aboriginal astronomy that uh, people were saying there's a lot of astronomy in Aboriginal culture. And I got more and more interested in um, hearing about it, um, especially about things like creation stories. So as a scientist, my creation story is that the universe all started in the Big Bang 13.7 billion years ago. And I can tell you all about that to your board stiff, if you like. But, um, but uh, Bill's creation story I I is good. That's uh, <coughs> got its own Big Bang. Now, was that... <laughs> With that Big Bang again, he's talking about with uh, Mud Borongo is a creation dog in the first in the country. There was three people. Rainbow was a ground dog that made water. And uh, the Mud Borongo created the earth. He was made to rainbow. But Mud Borongo was still 
in the country is children of uh, Dungdung, Dungdung old lady, who is married to two people, Nade and Kurundal made the rainbow. They're the one that made the flood come right through and all that. But that's a Madhvaranga, the one, the one come along in a country, the little boy, he split the dog's ears, we call. When he split the dog's ear, the dog just sang out very loud and clear because the dog had the most powerful spiritual song in his body. When he sang out, it changed the whole world in this country. We just saw five men, took him a rock. When the dog just sang out, the shadow of all the people went into all this rock. We call that water the Buddha being in there, right back from the beginning of the creation. But then in the creation time, there's a two, what's your name? Igalo, the witch that leader, that was a watchman, when they were doing a or a creation song right across the country. So th these are the watchmen yeah, here, these yeah. two watchmen. When they were watching, oh. and the people had it too, what you done? All that. And I just sing the song that what they were watching it and make sure everything was done. But I got a letter bomb, letter bomb, and I got a letter bomb, letter bomb, letter bomb, and I got a letter bomb, letter bomb, and I got a letter bomb, letter bomb, and I got a letter bomb. Oh, boy, boy, boy. They went right across, and that I learned so much from the old people. I'll thank all those old people, but they were gone. But um, here I am. I'm trying to teach the young ones. Now I'm getting back to the white people that try to teach them, you know, <laughs> and they're the good understanding. I got two books out: Born Under the Paper Bark, Star Sparkler, and You Can and I still doing another one with the Aboriginal customary law and the white law to come together. And. Here, is it, this is the sky boss again here? Well, uh, in the, oh, that's when again you can see the sky boss there, it's called Nade, he's with our rainbow next to it and one on each side. Now the rainbow, the one throwed the blood in the country right across called Ngabal Ngabal. When he brought the blood called Ngabal Ngabal, well they made a Jalangi jali ge jang abal abalan gaera jalbanga gaera jalbanga jalangi jali ge abal abalan gaera jalbanga gaera jalbanga jalangi jali ge jang abal abalan gaera jalbanga. That's when the flood came right over and it started to burn the whole world. <laughs> but when it got spit, the water went back to where the sea level. But another is the sky boss. He's still up there in the sky. He's the boss for all of us. And that's why he's there so all night. We'll, we'll meet him in a minute. Yeah. And Willie Wagtail, the Jigirija, should be yes. there behind him. Yes. Yeah. The Jigirija with the tail up, which is like what the white man call a jug or a line, no, a handle. Mm. He's a star, and a north. Oh, where's the north come on? Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. We'll, we'll come and meet him in a minute. Actually, we can't see the Willie Wagtail at the moment. He's, he's down underneath the ground right now. But, uh, all right, we'll meet the others a bit later. That's the Milky Way, though, isn't it? Yeah. The serpent. He's right. the only one Milky Way, Nada and the Gorondolmi and all. And air belt, too. Right. So, about this time, you're becoming an elder, <laughs> learning all this information, and I'm becoming a, a sort of elder in my world, <laughs> uh, trying to now work in full time, trying to understand the universe. This, this here is a galaxy. I'm going to spend a couple of minutes just telling you about what, what this is. So, these are the things that I study. All the dots are stars, you've guessed that, haven't you? You may not have, probably will, but some of you may not realise the sun, our sun, which is all big and bright and keeps us warm, is actually a star, just like one of those stars. The only reason that the sun looks bigger and brighter to us is because it's so close. If you got close to one of those stars, that would also be like a sun. So our sun is just like millions of stars. And that thing there is a galaxy. It's an island universe, if you like. It's a, a whole group of maybe 100 billion stars. And that's what our Milky Way would look like from outside. We live, our sun is one of those billions of stars in a galaxy like that. And you notice it's like a flat catam wheel with a bulge in the middle. And the whole thing's turning round. And we're all part of that motion going round and round. And you notice these dark lines. Those are dark lanes in the galaxy, places of gas and dust where stars are being born. Now, if by magic we could remove the ceiling and look up right now, and it wasn't raining, <laughs> and the lights weren't on, we would see something like that. That's what the sky right above us right now looks like. 
which you can see up. So imagine you're looking up there. And this is the Milky Way, all this stuff going across here. That white fuzz is just millions of stars a very long way away. All those stars you see at different distances, that, that one there is actually the closest star to the sun. Still a heck of a long way away. But some of those stars are hundreds of thousands even times further away than that. <coughs> and you notice you can see these dark lanes. And they're the dark lanes which you saw in that other galaxy. And so this line up here, this is us looking through the plane of that wheel, that Kappen wheel. Okay, and that bulge there is looking towards the centre of our galaxy. And when you look up, you're actually seeing this big disk of stars up above you. And next time you go out into the bush, look up. Instead of just seeing that line, you try to imagine what you're actually seeing. And it's absolutely mind-blowing. You're seeing stars hundreds of thousands of light years away. And in those dark lanes are stars being born. OK, so that's my story about the Milky Way. Well, just to orient you, there's the Southern Cross, there's Scorpius, and we'll be talking about those more minutes. You, you recognise that from the Australian flag, of course. Um, OK, what about your Milky Way, Bill? Now, in the Milky Way, you can see where the star sparklers is all right. Inside in a line with the Milky Way, we call that one. In the morning, so you look at what we call the rainbow in the, and the black air belt. Air belt, and what they do, all the ceremony and all this, right across the country. And then when you come to the, uh, what's the name, Seven Cross, we talk about Seven Cross, and we're talking about Seven Sisters. Right, Seven Sisters over that way. Seven Sisters is right down the bottom, somewhere this time of the year. But they will come up. And with him, that, that what we're talking about, with that uh, Emu Kumarinji, we call it. And the seven cross, we tell all the teacher, that's what the old people used to tell us. When you look at that star, they said, you lay on your back and look up. And that star, you'll see it all blinking. They said, when they all blinking, you can see it, they all talking. You know, they're blinking. Sure enough, they, the stars are all blinking. If you haven't used Go out to any place in Northern Church, you put your swag out and look at it in dry season. You can see the stars are blinking like that. And when we started having it out, the, the star is blinking, we are blinking. Cow can't talk, horse can't talk. They might be all connected with the star we came. You know, they're all talking by the eye. That's what we just said, see? And that's what we just talking about. We only just put that across. Right. That's all called Kumarinji. In a Milky Way, Paul Bonin. So next time you go out into the bush, you look for the emu, right? It's an absolutely magnificent sight. So can you see it? It's the, dark, the emu is made of the dark patches. It's not made of the bright bits. Different from European constellations. There's the head of the emu. There's its neck. There's its body. And there's its legs. Going out. And people, Aboriginal people right across Australia, recognize the emu as being very important. Um, and at the moment, he's dipping down, as Bill said, to drink. Different times of the year, a bit different angles. Is it he or she? No, he. He, he. he. Right, okay. And um, the, these two stars here, the pointers, they're the two eagle hawks, the two guardians that yeah. you were talking about yeah. earlier. Okay, so what about the Southern Cross down there? Um, so you notice, well, of course, we all know it from the Australian flag, different, every Aboriginal group throughout Australia the Southern Cross is important. It's important to everybody. And uh, some other people have it as a, say it's a stingray, or, well, what do you say, Bill? We say about something like with the emu, you can see the shadow of the emu pointing out in the black night there inside the Milky Way. That's the emu land and we come in on a different order. When we walk, we love this footprint, it's called that's what we say. So that's an emu footprint. Yeah, there. emu footprint, you know. And then look at uh, the two pointers. And the mud we should, should be there somewhere to mud but I can't see it in the right. little one. I'm gonna look at that here. I've got a good eye, but good enough. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to that <laughs> in a second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So if we move up there, you remember I told I told you about the constellation of Scorpius up there. And in Greek mythology, Scorpius was seen as a scorpion. And in Waterman. Yeah. In Waterman the like we call uh, the Scorpius I call. But in another word I call scorpion. 
ನಾವು ಒಂದು ಯಾಕೋ ಮುಂಡಾಲ ಕಸವಾಗ ಮುಂಡಾಲ ಇದೆ ಮುಂಡಾಲ ಉದಾದಿತ್ಯ ನಿಯರ್ ಪಿಕ್ಚರ್ ಮನ್ ಇನ್ ಇನ್ ಸ್ಕಾಯ್ ತಾರ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ಸ್ಕೈಪ್ ಬಂದ ಬಿನ್ ಸ್ಕಾಯ್ ಎಂಡ್ ಐ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಚರಮಾನಿ ದ ಚರಮಾನಿ ಕನೆಕ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ವೈ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಏ ಕಾನ್ ದ ಸ್ವರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಮುಂಡಾಲ ಮುಂಡಾಲ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಸ್ವರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇಟ್ ಅನ್ ಸ್ಕಾಯ್ ದ ಸ್ಕೋರ್ಪಿಯನ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಅಸ್ ದ ಸ್ಕೋರ್ಪಿಯನ್ ವಿ ಹಾವ್ ಗಾಟ್ ದಿ ಕ್ರೋಕೋಡೈಲ್ ಕ್ರೋಕೋಡೈಲ್ ವಿ ಹಾವ್ ಗಾಟ್ ದಿ ಕ್ರೋಕೋಡೈಲ್ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ಎ ಮಂಕ್ ದ ಚರಮಾನಿ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಕ್ರೋಕೋಡೈಲ್ ಕಾಲ್ ವರಿಗಾ ವೆನ್ ಹಿ ಸ್ಪಿನ್ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ the milky way star the moon is well then call we with the word we call it the water man we read by abun one and awari ja that mean i speak from a water man because i grew up in the bush <laughs> sorry to hear this there like the hebrew people in the bible then i in wari ja abun we read more and guru hari alur bo that mean we go back home ga huh? and that's what the after the ceremony then guru ya ngajangan wirik that mean after later we come up wara kenjangan that wara mean cat Mm. Right, we'll, we'll go and, yep. So there's all this big ceremony starting to happen uh, at creation time. All these animals, all these spirits are coming together in the sky to make it all happen. And of course they need something to eat, so they build a, a ground oven. Tell yes. us about the ground oven. And a ground oven, when they put it in, they held a very big ceremony. Ground oven called Gerin. Gerin where we roast all the beef and everybody. everybody come all over there. even today we call for the people go from desi down to solwara people we call us other mob solwara people desi people we are in the middle you know in right. the, you know we call and that's what we have a big traditional ceremony that's what the the wara you know it called wara and the wara wara is a catfish and the jaren is a ground up right and we have all the ceremony there so all these spirits they've got this ground up and they're cooking the yeah, food yeah whatever in creation time and the the ground oven is actually that little splodge there a technical term a te- technical astronomical term splodge um actually we we have a, a name for it which is ngc 6475 um <laughs> but you probably prefer jerin or ground oven it's also called ptolemy's cluster actually it's a it's a lovely little cluster of stars uh it's a place where stars have just been born so it's a whole group of stars young fairly young stars maybe 200 million years old which is young that's in astronomical terms and it's called ptolemy's cluster because ptolemy in about 120 AD uh noticed it there and uh <coughs> uh spoke about it it's one of the first nebulae that uh, we astronomers knew about before there's a group of star when you're talking in a big ceremony and all this sort of stuff there's a group of place where the women and men come together and relate it and the bush tucker call bandalan bandimi and all that that's why they're all in there near the water place right there. great but the watchman with the eagle look Yeah, they're the watchmen, like it. Patrol oh, man. So the, the watchmen are out there yeah, watching the, us all the time. Watching all the, make sure they're doing everything right thing. Right. Yeah. Well, that's and, and you mentioned the... And that bullion, we call it. Bullion. Bullion. Bullion, yeah. Bullion, yeah. Right. And you mentioned the catfish earlier. Catfish, catfish are water. Okay. That's in a ceremony near right. where the ground up in it. So this area is obviously really important because it's... This is where this big ceremony is taking place. They're very big important when everyone today now that all the way we put them together is it. Right. Now we teaching the young one like today. You know, uh to bring it out uh the lifestyle back from the bush from early day. You know, try to bring it back because I'll say a little bit wherever where the eagle rights come on board for eagle pie and all of that sort of remove many originally from the bush to town area and some of them really born in the bush they raised they knew a little bit some born in the town they lost the culture then they originally tried to take people back into the bush to teach them the ceremony and law put them through the law but the property owner said you can't come back here because some rule was made with the two government i don't know whether liberal or labor but got away now anyway but they all had a hand anyway today <laughs> Anyway, that's with the law. <laughs> but now you're the property owner. Yeah. So you're fixing it. Yeah, this. well we're right. We got to be on land, we got to be property, we're running cattle tourism and everything. We're yeah. right. Teaching the young one that's good, see. Well, right. we had men in the news. Okay. So this area here in the sky where this big sun is happening, this is also important to us astronomers. It's a, I find it amazing these parallel coincidences. So I said that our Milky Way is this big Catherine wheel spinning round. And this area here I said this is the bulge at the center and actually where that catfish is is actually the center of our galaxy and there's a 
a big black hole there, a distortion in space and time, uh, which sits at the centre of our galaxy, which many people are studying. So I just find it fascinating that this central place in our galaxy is also where your central ceremony takes place. I mean, how, how cool is that? <laughs> anyway. Find where the big hole there now. Right. So all the stuff um, that we've been talking about is in the, sort of up there. All that stuff is up there somewhere. And now we're going to move around. There's a, there's a star just back there. Ah, I was hoping that people would turn their heads. <laughs> we're not in the bush, we're inside yeah, a house. Okay. So if, if we got rid of that wall, sorry, all you guys would fall on the floor, but never mind. Um, there's a star back there called Spica, the white faced wallaby. Yeah, Gandharen. 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 So what, what happened with that? Uh, Gandharen, the day of the ceremony and everything, and later on he died. When he died, they thought, because the old moon died and come back alive. They said, right, a country, and now we'll bury. When they buried a country, uh, they said, no good, because all possum bucket the whole world. Mm. Possum died for good, he'll never come back like a moon. Little man then said, can country, we must go over see rock got the moon in. So, so before you go there, we'll get there in a second. Can I yeah. just go back over? So you've got this white-faced wallaby, white -faced who, wallaby who died, and but he came back to life. Come back to just life. Just like the moon came yeah, back, come to, back life. to life. So there's the story, uh, again, that we find in lots of groups across Australia about the moon. So the moon changes from place to place. So, so the moon died. Why did he die? Well, he was called Jabari in a tribal skit called Jabari when he was human in the country of Wokona. Because we done something wrong with the mother-in-law, that's why they sang him and he died. But he died, but his shadow still come back alive. They said, oh, moon died, but he come back alive. That means we must die and all come back alive. And he does this every month and, to and this that's day. that's what they thought, everyone going to come back alive. Yeah. But when they buried Possum, Possum died for good. They said, oh, Possum died for good, now called Gawian. Well, we all never will come back alive. But uh, man then, so the lady said, we'll take the shadow up to the sky, give it to the rock pot. And he gave the shadow to the rock pot called Munin. When they gave it to him, over there, he said, okay, we'll give it another one called Judja, the water one. Them two, they look after that spirit. They said the spirit out inland, find his mum. And, and the mum, the little kid find his mum anyway, uh, the newborn. And they checked it on him. He had a burst mark. We said he'd come back a lot. We call it Imeru. Imeru means in the white man world, called reincarnate. That's where they come back. Right. And that's where they come so, so the spirits, they go up into up the sky. And down. And the rock cod looks after them when Look they're up there. Yep. And then they come back come down. Come back down to water. And they wait to find their mother. And then they go out in And then they're reborn. Right. right. Then they go to Jalala. We got, I named the one guy here. Mm -hmm. We might get sure they might want million. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Great, yeah, go on. Okay, that's right. <laughs> we'll come on to uh, Jalala in a second. What, one other thing, this, that star over there, Spiker. Again, that's important all around Australia. Uh, the Yolngu people in Arnhem Land, they see Spiker as being something to do with the water lilies or, or the um, rice, as they're called in Yolngu. And, um, in fact, they wait for Spica to be in the sky. When Spica's in the sky, they know that the bulbs of the water lilies are ready to be picked. And this is another way the star's being used to tell you when it's time to harvest a crop, which for some people means that that's time to move camp. When you see Spica up there, that's time to move down into the lowlands because it's time to gather the water lily bulbs. But uh, rock cod. So we're moving up into the north there, and uh, there's our star we call Arct Arcturus, you call it Munin? Munin, no, no, yeah. And so the rock cod's job is to look after the spirits. Look after the spirit, it is all, or Jalala. And Jalala is a very important all that goes from Jalala to the cherry. <laughs> and look after the spirit and put them down to the water, and the kid walk out and find his name. And, and when, when it's in the water back on Earth, when yeah. spirits come down? Yeah, they look after by a little water guana called Judja. And they, get, they feed him with the green wheat and the water. The green wheat that they call the algae. And you say many kids today in a hospital born. Now everyone here in this room must know kids gotta come out with the algae. 
when they are born. Did that you see in a little baby born? That was the algae. That's the that's, algae. That's the algae. We all believe it in our law. Right. And kid born, what will it get algae from? Not from milk, from algae and the milk come together, breastfeeding. <laughs> but Jalala is important. I gave my old friend a name, Jalala. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's a good man. <laughs> so, well, in fact, we're, so Jalala is about there. Yeah, about there. <laughs> Uh, and that's the star we call Vega. Vega. So, so you're saying that this star is not really a star at all, it's actually a tunnel. Well, it's a tunnel, it shows the clear, you know, the complexion in a cave right through the hole, believe me. Right. That's so what the spirits it, go up. Yeah, he's a star, he, he, he's a star anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, I find it fascinating this idea that you have that there's this tunnel, the spirits go up into the sky and go into this tunnel and into the Milky Way. Milky Way. I, I mentioned earlier the black hole in the middle of the galaxy and uh, we still don't understand how black holes work completely but some ideas are that black holes are also tunnels. There might be tunnels that connect us to another universe or to the future of our universe or maybe the past. But we're going to end this evening by talking about the future. And uh, well of course the, the future is our children. So tell me, Bill, about your family and the Waterman kids. Are they learning all this stuff? Well, uh, with this, that are we learning, you know, pitch and piece of kids all around the country. Now, uh, we're going to take many kids. We're still learning for kids. They're learning from kids. A lot of them go the, from the uh, school up there, down to uh, university and all that. They're learning. There's so much from both ways in Aboriginal culture in the white man law. And I said, not like us. We grew up in the bush, you gotta learn like we do. You got the technology stuff that you gotta go through with all this reading and writing. We're different, we got a computer brain, we say. They want people want a laptop, they want to get something, computer, email and all that. But for us, connecting with the spirit, we tell the young ones. That's how we learn. We run I'm running the Aboriginal culture tour anyway. And that's what we are up to now today. So Communication is really important. Communication is word, not, not word of mouth, word of mouth. That learning the most. The kids, Black, the white, whatever. Said, I'm happy to teach every, you know, even breaking in horse, fencing yard, building, making rope and all that. Boots, mm -hmm. I'm a saddler by trade, you know, and all that. I teach them all. But we're not young anymore. And if we lose, we don't teach it, we lose the culture. And that's what I teach them on today. I have to tell you a story. You'll hate me for this, Bill. We were doing this, this show in uh, Darwin uh, last year, and Bill was just saying this stuff about how it's important to not use all these gadgets, do it face to face, and his mobile phone went off. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, eh? <laughs> that was good. You couldn't, you couldn't have scripted it. <laughs> that would have stopped then. <laughs> but uh, we're going to end this evening with some very traditional communication from Bill. Right, uh, first I'll sing you the one away, the digital do one, oh yeah, summer, but I'll. Well, at first I'll play your didgeridoo and I'll sing you another traditional ceremony song again. Well, I'll play your didgeridoo the real traditional way and I'll play your song to the same time. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing your fantastic culture with us this evening. I have to say it's uh, been a tremendous privilege for me to work with someone like Bill and uh, it's a, an incredible experience to 
have your eyes opened a little bit to all this culture. Um, I'd also like to thank you for being such a wonderful audience, and to I'd like to thank RIOS for inviting us here. And it's been a really good evening. Thank you. Wait.